most deadly methods of catching fish on stocks reservoir throughout the summer months is the washing line. Basically the washing line is suspending flies in the surface layers, usually nymphs, by using either just one booby on the point or a second booby on the top dropper as well. Hence hanging the flies on a washing line. They're usually dial backs or crunchers or buzzers. The washing line's usually fished on a straight floater or on midge tips or other sink tip lines. I've got a four fly cast set up here and I'm just going to show you what I've got on. Any comp angler that's ever fished stocks reservoir will have one of these. This is a cat's whisker booby, a yellow eyed chenille bodied cat booby, absolutely deadly on any water with a bit of a peaty tinge in it. Next to it I have got a small green holographic dial back size 12. Then next to that, my second middle dropper, I've got a small black cruncher and then on my top dropper I have a red holographic cruncher, otherwise known as the Nemo. Now the idea is, is that the booby on the point reduces your sink rate down so you can cast these flies out, pull them straight so straighten your leader up and then basically you get a slower descent through the surface layers. This is something that's really important on Stocks Reservoir because of the peaty tinge in the water. When you get down much below sort of six, eight, ten feet, the light starts to diminish rapidly. So most of the fish that we're fishing for here is in that top six foot layer of water and a booby on the point allows us to keep our flies in that band of water. However, it would be misleading if I was to say to you that what I'm trying to do is hold my flies right up in the surface because that's not actually the case. I've got a diagram here of a basic leader setup and you can see there that on this diagram I've got buzzers on the droppers and I've got the cat booby on the point there but you'll notice that the cat booby has sunk down below the water level. And that's actually what's happening most of the time when you hear about these big catches being caught on Stocks Reservoir. We're not keeping them up in the surface. The weight of the fluorocarbon and the weight of the nymphs on the droppers is easily enough to pull that cat booby down and make it descend slowly through the top sort of six foot of water. And it's often the cat booby that will get take a fish when it's five or six foot down under the water. So this, the key with this method is control. And uh, you have to make sure that you're in control of your line, just like the nymphing, slowly twiddling, figure of eighting, keeping in contact with everything and uh, waiting for that trout to come and take it. The mindset is setting a trap rather than trying to induce a take by retrieving your flies. You're setting a trap and waiting for it to be sprung. So let's take this cast out onto the water and see if we can make it work. Dripping up the dam arm at Stocks Reservoir, just near 10 acre foot going on to Halstead's hike. And just before I cast this line out, there's one little thing I like to do, and that's take the booby, just pop it in the water and give the eyes a few squeeze. Squeeze some of the air bubbles out. And that makes it a little bit more neutral density rather than really buoyant. And uh, it's gonna help the nymphs and the fluorocarbon when pulling it down. Okay, cast the line out, that's the first thing. You don't need to cast far when you're nymphing. And first things first, we do a long, oh God, a long draw in order to uh, straighten the leader usually, but there you go, straight away we're into a fish. And uh, that really genuinely was first cast. <laughs> so there we go. Normally the first draw is to straighten the leader um, and then we start twiddling our way home, but that fella took it pretty much as it landed on the water. These guys don't want to come in this season. They are absolutely going for it. Into the net, nice and quickly, as quick as I could. He's not too tired. Lovely stocks, rainbow there with a full tail. Taken green holographic dial back.
I landed that last fish and the heavens opened. We got literally drenched in a matter of seconds. We've had to race back to the jetty up to the lodge to get my waterproofs. That was a schoolboy error coming out in jeans. Right, we're going to go through this again. So, we cast out. Doesn't need to be a long line. The flies and the line land on the water. Our first thing to do, lean forwards, little draw on the line just to put us in contact with those nymphs and that booby. So everything's straight now. I know that if I twitch my hand, boom, those nymphs are going to move. I'm in contact with them. We then need to turn our attention to the little bit of line hanging off the end of the rod there that goes down to the water. And the, one of the reasons we need to concentrate on this area is because it shows us how fast we're moving or not moving our flies. For example, if I want to move these flies and twiddle them, you can see that I'm picking that loop up off the water. I'm retrieving quicker than the boat is drifting. If I stop and want to fish them statically, I know how quickly I have to retrieve just to keep a dead drop of line down but remain in contact with those flies. I can't stop retrieving it altogether because then the boat starts catching up and we end up with slack coming right through the system and with all that slack there there's no chance if a fish takes I'll be very lucky indeed to catch it. So we tighten everything back up again and I can lift the rod and now I know that I'm moving those flies, slowing their descent down and holding them up in the water. There is another reason that you would keep your eyes fixed down there on that little bit of line that's going to the water and that's because it becomes your bite indicator. If a fish takes you're going to see that loop lift off the water. If I can meet that fish by lifting my rod and the soft tip of the rod will set the hook in the upper mouth, upper jaw of the fish. You will get about a 95% hook rate. If you are not watching and you're looking around and looking at other boats or an interesting osprey flying over or something like that, if you've been distracted, then you'll most likely feel the take as a jab on your finger. And a good percentage of those, those takes are going to be bounced out of the fish's mouth. The hook will just pop out and you'll miss them. The difference, I believe, is about 60% if you're not watching, up to 95% if you are. So it's a huge difference when it comes to hookup rate. So we go again here, cast out. Now, don't be put off by the fact that I'm fishing a great long leader with four flies. You don't need to do that at all. You can shorten this down. You can fish with two or three flies. It is better with three than two. It gives you that nymph, that midwater nymph with the booby on the point, as well as the, the one next to the booby pulling it down. So, but it only needs to be a 12, 15 foot cast. It's easy to do. So don't be put off. It's a fantastic way of fishing. It's a really, really rewarding. And on its day, it can be absolutely deadly. Give it a go.